Let me tell you that on the 17th day also, on Tisha B'Av, later on, that uh, the Romans give an order that uh, they should plow the field. Well, so this so this Roman said, because he found a passage of the prophets, it says, see and so did the Chorosh, that the holy temple will be plowed like a field. You know? So in order to fulfill the prophecy, he plowed the field. You know, you know how deep it's cutting right through, you know. All the all the hypocrites, you know, all the evil, they always it's written in the prophets. Right? Kind of just, they always do it for the sake of God, you know. All everything which goes wrong in the world, you know, no, nobody ever starts killing people. This they fight for peace. This the prophet. This prophet. That you know? very very strong, you know. Remember when 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 this Roman general killed the ten holiest rabbis? He says he has to revenge because the ten brothers, you know, sold Joseph. So he's to revenge Joseph. Well, you give a damn about Joseph, you know? If Joseph would have been living, he would have killed him also, right? Suddenly, you know, strange thing, you know. But this is, you see what it is? This is part of being in exile, you know? What is exile? Everything holy is in exile, you know? It's not showing what's inside, right? The very fact that people can fool the world and say, you know, we have to plow the fields in the holy temple because to fulfill the prophets, this is the greatest sign of exile. You know, it's heartbreaking, you know? Last night, I was there, there was this little Jesus freak came in, you know? Sweet girl, you know. I, I understand she was a dope addict before, you know, and then she was, I don't know what, okay, so she became a little Jesus freak. I wouldn't have gotten so angry at her, you know. I wasn't angry, it was just heartbreaking. She comes from a real religious home, you know, and the parents, Jewish girl. Tell you what, if an angel comes to me, talks to me about Jesus, I have the greatest respect. Everybody has a right for his religion, you know. But if someone grows up in a Jewish home, parents who came from a concentration camp, you know, and, and were killed by Jesus people, now you have to become a Jesus. I still, you know, I spoke to her softly. But then I asked her straight, I says, what do you think is happening to the six million Jews, you know? So she says to me, they're going to hell because they didn't believe in Jesus, you know? So this is already too much, you know? They're going to hell because they didn't believe in Jesus. And she believes in Jesus and she is saying, yeah, but this is not even, even, even the most low, rotten Catholic would be ashamed to say such words today, you know? Yeah, but they're a little bit advanced. This is heartbreaking, you know? I really want to get it, you know? Six million go to hell because it, you know, just, what kind of God is that, you know? It just doesn't sound right to me. This is a sign of exile, you know? That means you can hang up God on something. It's not this one girl. It means that the whole group there, but this is what they're walking around. So I asked her, when did we suddenly stop being... I said to her like this. Obviously, if we are the chosen people, we are the first ones to know when the Messiah is coming. Right? It just isn't fair, right? So I asked her, when, according to your theory, did we stop being the chosen people? must have stopped somewhere and tell me who was chosen instead you know like if God you know listen if I if I choose one girl I take another one at least that'll be better looking right but <laughs> God leaves the Yiddelach and whom does he take first the Jews were chosen the Jews were no good anymore whom did he take the Jesus freaks right all the Jesus people who, who killed more than anybody the Romans according he have to cho you know what it means I don't know make myself clear if there's such a thing as chosen people that means God needs a headquarters in this world right God has an office right that is an address in an office, right? Since Abraham, since Abraham, Abraham asked God, please let there always be one people in the world to serve you. Let there be one people in the world. So God says, if you remember the story, Abraham, God, not only your prayer was answered, it will be your children. Because Abraham was real, like he really was worried, you know, what will happen to the world. Nobody there to serve God. So, you know, according to the Pope, you know, this, this is true stuff. According to the Pope, Suddenly, we stopped being the chosen people. We stopped being the chosen people, and now the Catholics are the chosen people. You know? Yeah, that's what he believes, you know. And uh, we are just like, you know, God tolerates us, you know. So I asked her, according to your theory, when did we stop being the chosen people, you know? And I asked her, according to you, everybody, everybody believes that Jesus is chosen, right? That means all the people who killed the six million were chosen people, right? What? So I said to her, you know, if you are God, this is the choice you're making between the Jewish people. You, they're not the chosen people anymore. And the Jew so she said, no, they were not good Christians, you know. So I said, so you're the first good Christian, right? But anyway, the thing is like this. So I told her, listen to this. We have a long chain coming down for Abram. This is my chain. I'm hanging on to I'm just a little link. I'm hanging on to a chain, right? It's a real holy chain, you know. According to you, whom are you hooking on to? History, I must hang on to a chain. I'm, I'm not one alone in the world. Which, which chain are you hanging on? Even if you'll tell me that all the Jews people were no good till now, 
but you're still hanging on to that chain. This is your tradition from Jesus all the way down. How would you know about Jesus otherwise, right? So you're hanging on to, to a chain which is blood and murder and stealing and, and hypocrisy to the utmost, right? And I'm hanging on to a sweet little chain which barely made it, right? The holy chain. You know? So then she says to me, yeah, the only one who can save is Jesus, you know? I says, I'll tell you something, you know, I don't care for salvation. That's the truth. I'm looking for my salvation. You know, I'll tell you something very deep. It came to my head last night, you know, I told the kids, what's the whole thing that the tree of life is holier than the tree of knowledge? What's wrong with the tree of knowledge? So I know this is right and this is wrong. It's very important. I thought like this, that this really true Christianity is only concerned with right and wrong, good and evil. That's all they think about, right? heaven and hell. I said, do you know that this is the most pagan thing in the world? If I would say all God means to me that through God I know this is right and this is wrong, this is all there is to God, you know, like God is real, like, that's all there is to God. God is much deeper than that. It's a tree of life. You know, Moshe Rama didn't come down and said, I'm going to save you and I'm going to show you the right way. This is, this is all pagan talk. Mm -hmm. Because I want to save my neck from burning in hell, so I got to know the right way, you know. I'm going to travel agency, Moshe Rabbeinu runs the Mount Sinai travel agency, it's folks, I have the way to, ha to heaven, you know. This is, this is what it, so then she starts telling me, she says, no, she says, the, the blood of Jesus saving the world. I said, you, you want to tell me that God is running a butcher shop, you know. It's bringing blood all over, that's the whole thing God can do, you know. But it's really, you know, imagine, you know, this is very strong. You walk and ask the Kotzke Rabbi, you know, what is it to serve God? What is it really to serve God? He will tell you, you know, it is to be saved. That's all there is to it. It's much deeper than that. To be a servant of God is mean not to do wrong. That's the first step to be a human being before you're a servant of God. Before you can even dream of being a servant of God, you better don't do wrong. Because even animals don't do wrong. They just do exactly what their nature tells them. Anyway, I didn't get through to her, but I got maybe a little bit.